YouTube, YTPC, how you all doing? A short while ago, uh, a friend, YTPC, a Northwest Piper, said he was going to set up a, a shed and any advice that he could get would be appreciated. Well, of course, I encouraged him, but I just thought I'd take you through the anatomy of my shed as it now is. And just advice to anybody who's setting up a shed or thinking about it, because the it's a paradise, actually, if you have a shed in the garden. You can even put a shed on your balcony and basically tell the wife that uh, this is where wives fear to tread. This is a man shed or a man cave in the form of a shed. So what I did with mine First, I built this fundament foundation, if you like, that it was flat, which uh, was quite a bit of work. But there's loads of YouTube videos on how to actually set a, a flat foundation for a shed. And you can do it within three or four days. If you're just doing it on your own, if you get a bit of help, you can do it in a couple of days, really. So, what you have to realize is in Switzerland, you live in like a, a, a submarine, you know, everything's cramped and tiny. You know, this is half my garden here. I've got a lawn on the other side, but you know, you haven't got much place. So you, you sort of have to do everything in a, in a like a, a miniature, which I know people in America will struggle well you won't have to struggle with that because you've got plenty of room you can put a, a shed that's four times this is a two meter square shed so it's about i don't know two yards 20 square and um this shed was uh was a prefab and i got the guy to assemble it which i had to pay for but he was did in half a day what would have taken me two days and I'm sure I would have lost the screws you know or, or had to take it apart again because I did it wrong um, and it's kind of a what they call today a polymer you know composite shed but that's a posh way to say it's bloody out plastic you know but that said um, you know, it won't mold, it won't rot, it won't, um, it's, it's better insulator than just wood. It's double walled, so there's a little air gap between those walls. That's what I would encourage everyone to look what you can buy um, and something that's a bit thicker walled because in w winter you'll need that. And a good roof that ov overhangs a bit and good drainage that, you know, it's not going to leak because that's absolutely essential. This shed has to be dry. Uh, it's built on this one on a, on a steel frame. Just turn the radio down here. That's the old uh, radio, you see now. Come back to that. So, that's part of the steel frame and you know all around it it's supported by that so it will stand uh, any kind of storm that we are used to here in switzerland i'm on the north side of the house that's important because that means uh, it doesn't get a whole day sun it gets some morning sun like we have now um but after that the sun's gone so it won't really get super hot maybe in the hottest weeks of july you know it gets above 30 in the shed uh, but um you know be, being a closed vessel it will absorb the heat and being a dark roof and 
a black roof, it will absorb the heat. But on the north side of the house, it's uh, shielded from strong winds. It's shielded from uh, the heavy sun. So that's something to think about where you're going to put it. And if you've got anything sensitive in it that you don't want to get overheated or frozen, those factors are important. Now in winter, it's also a bit protected here because the, the chilling wind and frosts, um, you know, it's quite near to the house. So that sort of milds it down a little bit. The, there are frosts in deep winter, January, February, that that come around here, but um, it's not as bad if you just put it in the middle of a large lawn, all exposed, then it'll get colder. So that's that's the shed. Now, when you want to shed up, set up your um, stuff, you want all your home comforts, right? You want a man cave, you've got to have home comforts. That's key. And to have home comforts, I've got to have power. So I put a little tobacco tin down here as a socket, which I can close up. And that goes into my cellar for power. And, and that's easy to do. And uh, that's just one of those roll cables which I can pull in from the inside the, sh the shed and then put the uh, tobacco lid tin on. I've sealed it with silicon so you know it won't uh, get wet in there. And that's it, you know. If you're close enough to your house, you can just run a cable like that. You can, you know, put something more permanent down. Of course, that's always better. But for me, it was easy to do it that way. Once you've got power, you've got radio, you've got light, you know, you've got heat. You see my little heater down here. There it is. And that keeps it habitable even in deepest winter. I can warm it up to about 20 and if I'm wrapped up and everything, it's, it's fine. Now you may say, okay, in summer it's okay, you can open the doors, let the smoke out, but in winter, if you close the doors, um, you know, you're in a smokehouse and that's not good for your lungs. Well, good point, but you know, this particular shed has gills that is a ventilation set of sluts here and over here. So that helps. And there's always a bit of airflow through, even though I've put these rubber seals around the door to stop too much draft in winter because that gets uncomfortable. But um, it, there's always a little bit of airflow, so that more or less clears the air out. And if it does get a bit smoky, what I've got, if you close the door here, I've got basically these magnets on a string and just put that here across a bridge and then you've got a, a little gap to let the smoke out for a short while before you close it again before it gets too cold. Magnets are really useful, I find. Um, I put, for example, you can get these magnets, which you put a screw on, you can put on wood, and I can put all kinds of things on here. Like I did this little uh, extended speaker on this one. And, uh, you know, you can put your, you, some of your tools that they're just handy the other thing is uh, as well as magnets just put nails here and there and uh, lots of hooks to hang things and you know you look around your shed you think where can I hang that and you find things you know and that way you can you can more or less hang everything handy you know so I've got, uh, in summer, hot summer, I take everything out, the, 
the bourbon and the tobacco, but basically I keep a little supply here in the shed. So I've got some Eileen's Dream and uh, I've got some Bullite rye bourbon in the corner there. And uh, there's that rolling electric cable that I talked about and everything's connected to that. To that. Now, when I go in at night, I disconnect the power. So there's no chance of electrical fault or fire. You know, I uh, turn it all off in here, but I basically pull the, the plug out in my cellar to disconnect the power. So there's no risk, even if I'd left something on, but I, I usually, well, really always make sure everything's turned off. And in the summer months, uh, I take anything flammable out of here, like, you know, matches or lighters and stuff like that. But um, as I said, uh, so far the experience is it doesn't get that hot. As time goes by, all of this is actually secondhand shelves. More light in here now. That came from America, I got that in 1993, that metal rack and, um, you know, just use it all over again, that's how you keep your costs down. And um, there's a magnet board with some beginning of a collection of old tins, some of these you've seen but I've added to it and I've got a Gallica's uh, Rich Dark Flake there and uh, Bond Street I've shown you, that's just the Cruel, that's a German one with the Cleopatra on, on the chariot. I've got three or four more coming actually, so I'm adding to my collection. But that's what you want to do in your man cave or your shed, you want all these things that make you smile, you know, it's the Walter Raleigh Shed of Serenity, Ball's Head Tobacco, and this one I got recently, Blue Bell Tobacco, I just love that. Smoke and enjoy, that's what it is. And here I've got a little uh, sticker board. So anyone got some stickers you want to send me, of your channel or whatever, uh, I'll put them on that board. That's the beginning collection. That's my favorite beer mat, where the mermaid of the river is catching the fisher <laughs> but this is basically what you do you, you you put stuff in here that you want to have i've got a little pipe rack here with a couple of cobs and one of my blakemar pipes as, as I said, when it gets really hot in summer, I take it out just to make sure they're not going to suffer. But in winter, I don't think they'll suffer here. It doesn't, in the shed, get really much below zero. And I think uh, as long as it's not sort of icing and frosting in the, in the shed, you're, you're going to be fine. You know, plenty of uh, ambience lanterns like this electrical, all electrical stuff. I don't use any fuel heating or fuel. I've got some candles, but um, you know, you've just got to be careful of if you add fuel heating, it's going to produce carbon dioxide and maybe even some carbon monoxide. And unless you've got a lot of ventilation or a really big shed, that could be a bit of a hazard. So I tend towards all kind of, uh, you know, electric solutions as I have done with my my heater down there. But of course, uh, if you say to the wife, I'm just going to the sh garden shed, you know, it's actually good if it's all full of equipment because, you know, you say, well, I've got to check on some stuff and, uh, you know, recharge the uh, mower batteries and, you know, I've got to get this or that or look at that and, uh, you know, means you, 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 it's a place of work and utility which is justifies the investment and it is very practical but in winter of course I'll stack all of this as tightly as I can at the back basically I'm going to have 
that sitting place and all my stuff near to me there and maybe the lower part where the mower is I, I can make space there but I won't have even half the shed I'll probably have about a quarter of its floor space or, or a third but that's enough it's enough I'm just going to sit here, listen to music and, you know, watch my uh, channel or, or um, YouTube channels on, on my iPad. Now, of course, I've got Wi-Fi and Wi-Fi, I'm close enough to the house that works perfect, even when the door's closed. So that's not a problem either. Otherwise, you could just get one of those repeaters, you know, boosters that you could uh, use your own Wi-Fi and you're off, you know, you can watch films in here, you know, and whatever. Now, over time, the thing is, it's work in progress with a shed. You never finish, you know. It's like your house. You're always thinking, oh, that would be good if I put this in there or that. And, um, you know, maybe I need to fix this or that. This is quite new, so I don't have to fix anything. But I'm always thinking, you know, how can I decorate it and make it even more homely. I'm thinking of getting a more comfortable chair for added comfort, you know. So um, those are my, if you like, experiences so far. I've been inspired by Mike Rondeau, who um, he, he had the idea of, uh, I think, putting a radio in and, um, you know, put your flag up for the country you live in. I live in Switzerland, so it's a Swiss flag that goes up there. Maybe I'll put a little Union Jack somewhere as well, just for fun. And I can put that up and take it down, you know, if I need to get to stuff behind it, just to, you know, make me feel uh, cozier in this place. So, those are all the sort of tidbits I can say about setting up your, your shed and may give you a few ideas, but, um, you know, as I said, uh, I think many will have a larger place um, and, and have maybe a different goal for the utility. Ishiban Piper, for example, has a metal shed, but I know he keeps a lot of his tobacco in tubs out there and... Um, you know, whatever purpose makes makes sense, you know. So, from time to time, if I do anything really interesting, I'll let you know. But uh, that is my shed of serenity for now. Well, I forgot the housekeeping. I've got this lovely Peterson Prince silver spigot pipe which i've shown before nine millimeter lovely pipe hope you enjoyed the the tour um do encourage everybody if you've got a man cave in your house or your basement that's perfect it's better because it's insulated and, and close for moving stuff in and out or whatever but if you haven't got that luxury um, sometimes I'm allowed to smoke in, in the cellar. My wife says, well, if it's really cold outside or whatever, and I do it sometimes, but it's just good to have a place outside. You know, it's easy to ventilate if you need, um, and uh, but you've got your home comforts there. That's the most important thing. Home comforts are the cornerstone of a man cave or a man shed. In some, this I'm smoking cart hall, which um, Steve Coddington sent to me, a box of this, I think. I still got a big tub of the Virginia made cart hall, so I'm um, well supplied, and I have tried Chat Chatham Manor, which is, uh, I think, almost well as as good, slightly different, but it, it's also very very good. 
I tell you another one, just while we're on the subject, that I, I bought. I was looking for a honey, a lot of honey, ton of honey tobacco, like the one I always remember from the guy I used to go for walks with as a kid. And there was the rich dark honeydew from Gallagher, wasn't there, you know? I didn't quite find anything like that, um, but I found Sutliff Honey and Chocolate. And Jim Inks said, if you like honey, you know, you're not gonna miss it. It's, uh, it's actually not as oily and goopy as some of the Sutliffs are. Um, it feels very good in, in the fingers and actually I, it's like a kind of Carter Hall, but honey, you know? So, of course, bulk, you know, so it's not that expensive. So I got four ounces of that and kept a little bit to, to try before I jarred it up. And I was quite amazed how, how good it was, you know? It was very much like this, but, you know, honey is at the front, not, not chocolate. And there's no um, sort of background of aniseed or anything like that. The only thing I was thinking is I've got power here. I could put a little fridge in, but as you see in my case, I'm so close to my house, I can just bring out a cold drink, you know, which is usually what I do, my iced tea. You know, it's like 40 seconds for me to go into, into the cellar or bring it out, so. The other thing I was thinking about, one of those little miniature Nespresso machines that I could actually make a coffee here, you know. But then I would have to, you know, keep an eye on, on the water and clean it out. And would I use it enough that the water wouldn't get stale? So, you know, you always have to think of the practicalities of it. but. The bigger your shed, the more insulated it is, the more possibilities you've got, you know. The only disadvantage, of course, is it, I use it in summer and it gets a bit grubby with grass and, and all kinds of stuff and the odd spider has moved in with me. So before um, winter, you know, autumn time, I do a, we'll do a pretty good clean up, you know, to get as much as the dust and, and stuff and spiders and everything out so that for winter it's you know st staying pretty clean and uh, but basically it's uh, it's not meant to be perfect is it you know it's a shit so you know that's just a personal choice how you want what want to have it here important is to have one of these blankets you know you get these so cheap you know like ten dollars or twenty dollars and um you know just in case it does get a bit of cold or something you know towards christmas time or halloween of course i hang up other lights and other decorations to give it a bit of uh, you know atmosphere You've seen from last year some of my um, videos about ghost stories and stuff like that. So, you know, you can always, um, you know, put up more things to make you feel it's, it's right, you know, for you and for the time of year. Anyway, anyone who's thinking about a shed, I can only encourage it, you know and uh, you'll never regret it. Uh, but there are those things to think about in the beginning to make sure it's set right and foundation is there and you bought the right shed that's worth some taking some time to think about what you want to have, if you're gonna build it yourself or not. But, um, Once you've got it, you never look back. Well, take care, my dears.
look after yourselves and um, get your shed project going. Ha <laughs> ha.